All right, um, my name's Russ. I'm the media technician here at CADARN, um, and it's my job to support and help everyone with the equipment that we've got, the video equipment, the lighting equipment, the sound equipment. Um, hold on, there we go. So, um, so if you've got any questions or queries about any of the cameras or any of the AV equipment, then get in touch with me and I can do my best to help you out. If I can't answer something, I'll find out. Um, so today, I'm going to go through all of this wonderful kit and all the kit that you've got in your hands. I'm not going to be able to go into everything in detail because there's just too much and I could spend a day on a camera. So we're not going to cover anything in any great detail, but I'm going to focus on certain little bits and bobs of the kit. Um, don't be intimidated by any of the tech talk. If I start to get a little bit too techy, just tell me to, you don't understand, let me know. Um, and I'll try and not and go down that rabbit hole. Um, yeah, so um, don't be overwhelmed by the kit. Don't worry about terms that you might not understand. We're going to hand out any of the presentations that we've produced, and so you can have all that. So if I skip over something, um, you can have all that information. And then you can just contact me and let, ask me um, any questions that you've got. OK, so um, we, when you're going through the kit, when you're turning things on, just be careful that you don't wear your batteries down, because if we are going to use them during the exercise and you've got no battery, you're in trouble. Is your battery charged, do you know? That one is charged, this one isn't. Okay. Um, we don't have spare ones of those. That's all right, but we can charge it off. In fact, I'll, hold on, you can have the battery off this one. Cause I'm, oh no, it's not there, it's in the bag. I've got it. Okay, anyway. Um, 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 um. Okay, so for the next hour, I'm going to go through um, various bits of kit, focusing on the audio equipment, um, then I'm going to look at the lighting and chroma key equipment, um, then editing software and then camera equipment, and then I'm going to focus, in each one of those, I'm going to focus on one piece of kit primarily, like the zoom recorder, which I saw somebody with. Um, I've done, I was going to do a three-point lighting demo here, but there's not enough room, so I've put it in the studio next door. So during the break, when you're having tea, if you want to pop your head in and ask any questions about lighting in there. Um, I will cover it briefly here though, um, and then I'm going to go through Wii Video and the small Legria camera and the JVC. Um, but as I say, because of time, I'm not going to be able to spend too much time going through any detail, um, just basic turn it on here to record, so that you're prepared for the session that we do later on when we're filming. Okay? Can I ask um, you one question? Yeah? Can you just show me how to take that battery off and put it to Yeah. So, see that there? Battery. Oh, okay. Cheers. So these are the sort of things we'll do in the camera workshop. <laughs> um, and then at the end, we'll do a questions and answers. Um, I'm not going to be able to answer too many questions because there's a lot to get through. But if you do have a question, ask me. If I can't answer it there and then, maybe ask it again later. OK? Um, right. So um, as I talk about each piece of kit, um, I'm going to try and focus on things like um, the plus points and negative points of each piece of kit. Um, the different quirks of certain bits of kit, um, something that I know Mary's pointed out is that on the Legria, you have to press this little play button on the side to see your footage, which isn't that clear, really. Um, so little things like that. Um, and then why you'd use a certain piece of kit over another. Um, <coughs> all the cameras are very capable, and they can all do different tasks. Like the Legria is great for recording a blog, but so is the, they're both as capable as doing it. In fact, you'll get better pitch quality. So they can all cross over into each other's sort of territory, but I'll try and suggest why you use one piece of kit over another. Um, and then later on, we'll be following up today's session with workshops on cameras, lighting, and recording. Um, they're just a few things that we've pulled out of the air. We've not actually formalised any of those yet, but that's sort of the, the air that we have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll be producing online videos. There's one for the Legria, which I'll show you a little bit of later on. And we're in the process of film, uh, writing and filming the JVC uh, online video guide. And then we've got infographics. I don't know whether you have any. Have we got that from there? So we've got, in your pack, you should have an infographic for the Legria, which just goes through some of the basic functions of the camera and how to use it. Um, and we're going to be producing a lot of these sort of things for each piece of kit. Um, so that you can have that as a resource to, to, to use and to share. Um, okay, um, I'm going to start with the audio equipment. Um, so, 
Audio is key, and people tend to forget about audio. They don't think that they need audio, they just think about the visuals because that's what you see and that's what's sexy and people like it. But if you try and listen to something that's badly recorded, then that's really, really kind of off-putting. It's more off-putting than badly recorded video. So there's a saying that people will forgive bad video, but they won't forgive bad audio because it just makes things illegible. Um, so it's important to be aware of the different types of microphones that we've got and how you can use them for different things. Um, we've got First off, this lovely white big microphone, <laughs> which is the Rode Podcaster, um, which is a computer mic. That's the only computer mic that we've got. Um, we've got these, um, the audio recorder, the Zoom, which is down at the bottom there. That's just the recorder, but it has microphones in it. And these, we've got the <coughs> Rode Directional mic, which I'll bring over here. So I've got it to hand, and then we've got the lab mics, or the clip-on mics, lapel mics, whatever you want to call them. So they're the three pieces of audio kit that we've got. Um, as I say, the lab mic, the road mic, and the boom mic are all mics and only mics, whereas the zoom, which is there, that is a mic, a recorder, um, and it's got loads of functionality, so there's a bit of a distinction there. Um, Okay, while we're talking about sound, each one of these microphones has got a different pickup pattern. Does anyone know what pickup patterns are when it comes to microphones? No. No, okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> okay, pickup patterns are how the uh, microphone picks up sound from the air. So if I stood over, I don't know, say if I stood over here talking to that mic, it wouldn't pick me up. This is a cardioid, uh, no, a unidirectional mic. You literally have to stand right in front of that microphone to pick it up. It's like a recording studio mic. Um, it's doesn't pick up noise and um, the room noise, which is why people use them. Um, because they don't want the hum of the, no the, the room, they don't want a hum of a computer. So it's a really, it's not, is it sen it's not sensitive in that you have to get very close to it. Whereas something like this is very sensitive and I could hold it here over the room and pick up somebody talking over there. Um, so that's a pickup pattern. So on here, on the screen, I've got three of the most common pickup patterns. You've got um, the zoom, which has an omnidirectional pickup pattern. If I put the zoom in a room, it'll pick up all sound. If I use the um, road and point it at a person, as I just said, it'll pick up that one person that I'm pointing at, and it will tend to eliminate a lot of the other sound. And then you've got the unidirectional mic, which is you have to be very close, and it, come, it picks up sound from one direction. It won't pick up any sound from that side. So if I was presenting on the stage and you've got lots of people screaming and making a lot of noise, it wouldn't pick them up, it would pick me up. So when you're issuing kit, when people are taking kit, they need to be aware of what microphone is going to be best for the job. Um, so, let's move on. So, podcaster, um, I'll go through each little bit. So, this is simple, it's easy to use, you plug it in and it works. Um, you plug it into a computer through USB, um, your computers should recognise it straight away. You shouldn't have to install any software. You may have to change the sound settings, but otherwise it's, it's very easy to use. Plug it in and it's working. As I said, it's great for recording in the studio. It's really good sound quality. Um, it's only got a short range. Um, one good thing about it is it records directly onto your computer. So the files go directly onto the computer. You don't have to take any SD cards out or transfer things or convert things. It's just audio files straight onto your computer. Um, you don't need any software with that then? You've got, the most computers have got built-in audio software. I know on a Mac you can use QuickTime. On a PC, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not a PC user, but I'm sure that most, most computers have a default audio player, a default um, film editor, a default video player. There'll be some performance software on most computers that has the recording capabilities to understand what this is um, picking up. Um, and if you can't, then there's a piece of software called Audacity, which we, we uh, encourage people to use, um, which is free, and it looks like it was designed about 15 years ago, but it's very good and it's free, so don't knock it. Um, it is easy to use as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you plug it in and Audacity will, as long as you've got your settings in your computer, it, when I tried it, it, the settings just <coughs> adapted to that and it said, yeah, I'm recognising that that's a uh, microphone. So it's very easy to use. Um, there's a little uh, headphone socket as well, where's that? I'll just turn that round, just here. So if you're recording and you're recording to the computer, you can plug your headphones in there and monitor what you're saying and hear how it sounds. Um, so that's good. Some of the microphones, you can't actually do that. With some of the cameras, you can't do that. 
but it's good to know what your levels are like and how you're sounding. Um, so that's one of the plus points of it. The only bad thing about it, really, well, there's two bad things. One, it's huge, um, and two, it needs to be on a stand. If you hold it, it will pick up all sorts of handling, handling noise. So you really need to have a stand. It doesn't have to be a big stand like this. You could use something like a table stand, like a Gorilla Pied or something, but it's not the sort of microphone that you can walk around and hold in your hand. Um, Is there an attachment on it that you could put it on? A when you get it, you get this little mount. This comes with the kit. This is in the box. So all you need to do, this is a light stand. Um, you can fix it to a mic stand. Um, the threads are quite universal. They should be interchangeable. So you should be able to, if it hasn't got an adapter, you could get an adapter to put it on one of those. Or you could just get a, a small little table mic stand with the right fitting. So they provide that so that you can attach it to a stand. Um, and that's, that's it for that one. It's, just, it's, it's a good little mic for podcasts and voiceovers and studio work. You wouldn't take it out. You wouldn't plug it into any of the cameras. You'd just have it on your desk and record audio straight onto the uh, computer. Can okay. I just ask, you said yeah. you have to speak quite closely to yeah. me. How close do you actually you, really I mean, if I stood here and spoke to it, it would pick me up, but it wouldn't sound great. So if I get really close, so it will sound... Do. You know that sort of DJ sort of yes. like, ooh. <laughs> I'm not a DJ, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to drive time and all that sort of... <laughs> so, you know. Can I ask you about the cable? Yes, of course. Sort of it's a USB, just a USB. Oh, just yeah. a USB. standard USB. That's well, it. What direction might you call that again? That's... Um, you need direction one. Uni. Unidirectional. Yeah. Does it come with a USB? You know? Yes. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's got USB. It's got the mouse for the microphone. Um, I think that's it. That's all you get in it. Yeah. And it's also got a pop shield in there. So if you get really close and you like, you get like a shield. You know when you see a microphone with a shield on the front and it stops the the spitting. Um, it's got one of those built in as well. So okay, I'm going to move on. Next, um, we've got the shotgun mic which I've already demonstrated. Um, but this is a, um, a shotgun pattern. It basically, it's, a, a very, it's hyper cardioid in that it's one direction, but it's really, really far in one direction. So if you were going to film something where you didn't want a microphone in shot, this is the microphone that you'd use. Um, so let me just find the next slide. OK. Um, OK, so it is easy to set up as long as you know what an XLR cable is and you know um, what recording device can do. You literally just plug in a professional XLR cable, which you should all have, um, into the back of that, and then that plugs in on the JVC um, here. And that's it. It's very simple to set up. Um, it's not necessarily simple to use. Um, booming is a skill that somebody spends their entire life doing. Um, they can stand there for days on a set. Just doing that, but people do do it, <laughs> um, or like that. Um, so it is easy to use, but it's quite difficult to master. Um, the sound quality is great, um, as are all the mics. I'm going to say that with every mic and every camera, it's great. Um, <laughs> um, and as I say, it's an excellent focus range. So if you wanted to film something that was out of, uh, you didn't want a microphone in shot, you'd use that. Um, it's also a really good mic to have with you, whatever situation, and you can use it on the boom pole, but you can quite easily just take it off the boom pole. And if you were doing an interview with somebody, just hold it and talk to somebody, and that would be picking up. So if I was talking to you, I could hold it here and just record my that. Hello, how are you? Recording this no, I'm not recording. There's no, there's no okay, well, are you okay? Um, now, this doesn't actually record into the mic. Um, but it has to be cabled, isn't it? It has to be cabled. This, does not, this is just a microphone, it's not a recording device. It has to be attached to a recording device. And as I say, it, it plugs straight into the JVC, um, with an XLR cable. It can go into the Zoom recorders, um, but you need to get an adapter. But I'll talk about the Zoom in a, in a moment. Um, can I ask when you're using that, if you want to check that you're getting the right levels? Yeah, there's a headphone. Oh, it's a he so headphone the best thing to do is, is just to plug, you plug the headphone into the camera. Oh, hold on, when you say that, 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 that my, uh, microphone? Yeah. It depends on the recording device. If you're recording on the camera, then you check your levels on the camera. So on the cameras, You've got a little audio meter that yeah, bounces. Okay. You see what the sound level is, and then you adjust that depending on what the readout's telling you. If it's clipping into the red, which is, means it's distorting, yeah. then you would dial it down a little bit. But you do that on the camera. You can't control how sensitive that is in the mic. That's all to do with the recording. No, no, no. I was thinking in terms of, of, of pointing at positioning. Oh, it's right very, I mean, it basically. Know, so you'd want to make sure that you were actually yeah. picking the sound. You want it you want spot on, yeah. ideally. If you move off, you, do, you don't. Most people wouldn't probably notice, but a professional sound engineer would be like, 
he wasn't on the sweet spot, and it's just in front of the mouth, just around there. Um, but you know, that's sort of professional. So you'd, be, you'd be checking that on the, on the audio monitor on the camera? Well, whoever was recording, the sound engineer would be there with their little monitor there. They'd be checking the levels and recording. Yeah. Um, where did I get to? Um, 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 um. So it's extremely sensitive, needs to, but it does need to be mounted. You can't actually hold it. Again, like the, the other microphone, you have to have a handle of some sort. Um, and this is a pistol grip, um, which I'm not sure whether... Has everyone got these? Yeah, everyone's got these. So don't use that, this microphone. Oh. I don't think you do have the pistol like grips in, you the, don't. in the kit. I, I ordered them no. extra after getting some advice no. on getting them. Well, somebody the um, highlighted the fact that we hadn't got them, so I thought we'd ordered them. We'll discuss it later. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, okay, when would you use it? You'd use this really for like when you're doing a proper shoot, when you need, so you've got enough people to actually help with sound, so you've got somebody who can monitor sound and record sound. So if you're doing a documentary or an interview, um, and as I say, anywhere where you don't want the microphone in shot. Um, can I just ask with a pistol grip? Yeah. That, that's if you're holding the thing. You've got another microphone yep. up there. That's just not in a. That's fine as long as it's on a stand. Well, no, but it, it's handling noise that you don't really want to avoid. You don't want because it's like the. Yeah. Shh. Imagine if you've got a phone call off somebody yeah. and they put their phone in the pocket and you just hear it rubbing around. It's that sort of noise that you want to avoid. Um, this is actually recording there, and this is plugged in through the cable to the camera over there. So okay. that's picking up sound from you guys. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to move on. Next one we've got is the lav mic, um, and this can be used with the JVC again, the camera, um, or the zoom. Um, and it's known as a lav mic, a lapel mic, a clip-on mic. It's got loads of little terms that people use, but the easiest thing to remember is it's a lapel mic. You clip it on your lapel, um, or a clip-on mic. Um, I've got one here. Again, as with all the kit, it's. Fairly easy to use, just straight out of the box. It doesn't, it's not rocket science, it's quite easy to just plug it in and you'll get sound. To use it well is a different matter. Um, it can be fiddly to use. Um, if you're getting any interference with the sound, these things screw off and you can switch that for a different audio adapter. So if I wanted to use that with um, the Zoom, I'd use this 3.5 mil jack. But if I wanted to switch that and plug it into the JVC, I'd use that, and it's just a tiny little screw. If that is not screwed in properly though, you will get interference in your sound, so if ever you're thinking that it's broken or it's playing up, just check the connections, and the same at this end as well. Can you um, use that with um, cable? Yeah. Extra, extra cable? Yeah, so what you would do with this, now that I've switched that to the XLR adapter, you plug it in to yeah. the XLR, then that would go into the, the camera. Is there a, you can buy a limitation with cables. You can get long, you can daisy chain multiple cables together, you can buy long 10 meter cables, you can get wireless transmitters, which is what I've got. I've got a mic on here, I've got a transmitter here and the receiver is over there, so you can get those for these as well. Um, but at the moment we've just got the wired version, so you can just plug this into the transmitter though, so it would work just as well. Um, right, so it's great for recording sound because it's right next to the source. And that's the best way you want to record. You always want to get your microphone as close to the source as possible. So if you're micing up a band, you put the microphone right next to the drums or right next to the amp of the guitar, because that's where the sound is strongest and clearest. And then you dial the sensitivity down on your recording device. So this is going to give us great quality sound, as opposed to this, which is just picking up all the ambient noise of the room. Um, it's small, discreet, it's flexible. Um, the, one of the problems with it is it can pick up unwanted sound. So if I started to do this and started to knock it, it would pick up all that. Matt's probably got sound coming through his headphones now. Just going, um, people with long hair, they, their hair can brush against it. That can be annoying. Um, um, the amount of times I've had to tell people to just put the hair over their shoulder or put, pony, put it up in a ponytail, stuff like that, or just cut it all. Um, <laughs> and the, the other and breathing as well. People sometimes they'll breathe down on the microphone and just like there's a lot of breath and things like that. Or they block the microphone or clothing. All all those different things can be very annoying and that's one of the downsides of this. And also sometimes you don't want a microphone in the shot. If you're making a fiction film, you don't want a microphone just there on the lapel because all of a sudden you've broken that element of what is it? Um, suspension of disbelief. Um, so it's good for interviews and presenting um, like this. Um, right, next, 
Sorry if I'm going through this Can I quickly. just go back yep. to that one for a second? Right, so if, if you've got that wireless mic yep. in your pocket, yep. can, you, can you transmit it back to your computer if you're recording direct into some... Mm, you probably uh, could. You'd have to get adapters because what this... Be the other end of there, it plugs into the camera in an XLR adapter. Right, okay. So that's the fitting that it's got. But I'm sure you can get a mini jack adapter and plug yeah. it straight into a computer yeah. and then record it. Yeah, yeah that, sh that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, um, I've not actually tried that, so um, that's a question that we need to follow up on. Can you do that, Lizzie? I'm sure you can. <laughs> um, okay, next one, we'll go into the Zoom 2. This, I think this is a great little microphone because it's just nice and self-contained. Um, it's really, really flexible. It's got five microphones in this top area. Um, it's small, it's battery paired, it fits in your pocket. So if you didn't want to use the transmitter to the camera, I could plug in this microphone into the Zoom and have that in my pocket and that would record the sound. And then we just sync that up in the edit with the video footage. So it can give you really nice, clear audio. Um, better than the onboard mic sometimes if it's too far away. Um, it's battery paired, the batteries last forever. The, they just last for, it, I read in the booklet, it says the battery should last probably a year of constant use, so it doesn't really use much battery at all. And the, it records the micro SD card. Um, I think in here, we've got, what's that? Let's put that down. Oh, that's only two gig, but that will record for up to 12 hours. Um, Approximately. Um, it depends on the settings that you have. If you've got it on a lower quality, it will record longer. Um, if you have it on a really high quality, it could record just for an hour. So it all depends on what you're recording, how many mics you're recording with. Um, can you just backtrack on that? I mean, yeah. You, you said you can use that to connect as your mic when you're filming as well. What you would do. Um, <coughs> sorry, I've just pressed stop on that. That's not what I wanted to do. Sorry, something just popped up on my computer and. Um, Threw me completely. Where did I get to? Zoom. Play. Okay. Um, now what I was suggesting you do, what you can do is you can record your video on this. Yeah. Use this as a microphone to pick up the sound. That's not the best microphone ever. This, if you've got somebody presenting in front of the camera, yeah. you could have them with a microphone here, clipped into, plugged into this, which is in your pocket. Yeah. So that's recording sound to there. That's recording picture and sound. Yeah. You then take the file from that, the file from this, Combine. Put them into the computer yeah, and combine okay. them in the editing software. Right. Um, and it's quite a simple procedure. It can be a bit fiddly, but it's just basically taking two different mediums. And what and editing software would you use for that? We'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, okay, I need to move on because I'm aware that. How long have I been going? Because that's just reset itself. Oh, God. <laughs> um, there's a lot of kit. I'm sorry if I'm boring. I may have to skip over some of it later on as well. Yeah, halfway through. Halfway through? Um, I don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, it's easy to use. You can literally just turn it on by pressing. If you've got one, you may as well just have a play with it while I've got it. So you pair it on on the side by pressing the, that little power symbol down and then you get the display popping up. Have you got it on? Yeah? I've got, I've got an old version. You've got an old one, okay. I'm trying to make these batteries, so I remember. And to record, do you just press record? <laughs> and it starts recording. It's a great little mic in that you can use it like that. It's got a lot of room for manoeuvring and for using it um, in, more in more advanced settings. You've got various microphone inputs, you've got filters, you've got automatic level control. You can use it to tune your guitar, you can use it to, as a metronome. So it's, you, they're used by bands and they're great for recording bands as well. Um, I'll press stop on that because I'm recording. Um, sound quality is great. They're very small, very portable, really flexible. Um, as I say, it's got five microphones in it, and on the top, you've got various different settings. You've got MS, which is mid, what's that, mid side. That's almost, that can recreate this sort of directional pickup pattern, so it can record directly out with a little bit on the side. You can have this one, which is XY, which will record a wedge, almost like an omnidirectional mic. So you could have two people being interviewed, and it would only record those two and nothing behind. Or you could have this two channel or four channel setting on the top here, and what that is, that's an omnidirectional, you could put that on a table and it would record everybody around the table, so if you've got a group discussion and you want to get sound from all angles, that is the mic group to use, and it's, as I say, it's got three microphones, one side, two the other, so when you've got it in the surround sound recording, it's using all the microphones, which just pick up sound all the way around. Distance again from, I mean, obviously it changes. It depends. Um, if you've got it on, the, if you, you've got one, haven't you, so if you look, put it, look at the MS. Yeah. 
that's um, mid side. So if you've got that pattern, I'll just quickly show you because I'll show you on this one. Yeah. Um, okay. Where is it? I've left the wrong one. Hold on. This is switching. And it shows you what you need yeah. to adjust. Yeah, so you can adjust. Got there. That means it's the going the out yeah. and the side, you can either make it wider so it's more sensitive at the side. But what I was really asking for folks yep. here is the idea of. I mean, obviously that one, it will, it will cover a distance. Yeah. But normally when you're talking to that, I mean, it's going to be this far away. Well, the, or, you want it as close as possible. As close as possible. Always, okay. with, a, with any sound equipment, you want it as close as possible. Okay. Always, because it's close to the source. Um, okay. We're recording this whole thing on this just to get the, everyone's questions and everything. The sound quality won't be great, but at least we've got some sound. Whereas if we don't hear your questions at all, then... It's just, it's better to have some sound in mind. Um, so really you always want to get the microphone as close as you can, right, okay. always. Um, but it can, it has got quite a good range. Right. Um, so can uh, I just ask you, you're recording then through multiple channels? Yeah, we've got a microphone you've recording there. This one and you've got this one. And then I've got this one as well. So we've got three microphones running. Mm -hmm. So if one of them fails or if I cough or if I start brushing it, which I am now on purpose, but if I started doing that, we can, in the editing, switch to one of the different channels and it's just clean sound. So you've got those options. Okay. Um, right, I'm going to have to stop answering questions. <laughs> okay, um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Where did I get to? It can, so it can record for long periods of time. Obviously that's dependent on the SD card. It can record for days if you've got a 64 gig SD card in there. Um, if you've got a 2 gig SD card, it will record for a short period, short period of time. You can plug a headphone in, you can listen to your levels. Um, I'm going to go through it actually because um, I was going to do a little bit of a demo with this. You can't plug in an XLR, one of these microphones um, that use this sort of connection without an adapter. Um, and it's suitable for everything, this mic. It's suitable for podcasts. You can have it on your desk doing a podcast at your computer. Um, you can use it for voiceovers in a recording booth. You can use it. Um, on a table for a discussion or you can use it for bands so it's really it's the most flexible camera um, audio recorder we've got. it's the most flexible microphone we've got um, it's the only audio recorder we've got um, and they use a lot with DSLRs as well there's been a lot of people wanting to use DSLR cameras over the last few years because they're cheap and they give fantastic picture quality but the sound is rubbish so people buy these and record sound with that record video with that and then sync the two in the editing software um, okay Okay, so that's a quick summary of the mics. Um, sound is a huge part of the, the, the whole recording process, so you want to make sure that you do get the right microphone. So don't just hand people out any old mic. Ask them what they're recording, ask them what sort of situation it's going to be in, whether they're going to be able to have mics on the actual person who's talking or whether they want something off, off screen. Um, so consider all those things when you're looking at microphones and people are like, making their productions. Um, okay, so next I'm going to quickly cover um, the lighting and the green screen. I was going to do a bit of a three-point demonstration, but I'm not now because we haven't got room. Um, but what I will do is just go over them briefly. Um, we, we, we need light to make films. That's the sort of the essence of video or photography. So we need to make sure that we've got a good light source. Um, and Lizzie's going to talk about using natural light. Um, and in some situations, that's great. <laughs> but in other situations, for example, a cloudy day, where the sun's coming and going behind the cloud, it can cause problems when you come to edit things. So if you're recording over three hours and the light changes multiple times, and then you try and condense it down to 10 minutes, the light changes from shot to shot, and it just causes nightmares. In situations like that, you want a reliable light source, which is why we've got these lights, um, where you can set your lighting and be confident that it's not going to change over the course of the, the filming. Um, so we've got these LED lights. Um, they're great because they don't get hot. They're LEDs, so they don't burn. They're just cold lights, um, unlike the traditional redheads or blondes it used to get, which would get ridiculously hot. Um, we've got some gloves which we used to use with lights. We don't really need them um, <laughs> with the LEDs, but we have got a couple of old um, tungsten light bulbs that we, we use with our kit that you should use these for when they get really hot. Um, but the LEDs, you don't need to worry about that. Um, 
as with a lot of the kit that we've got, it's easy to use at the box. You plug it in, you turn it on, and it will work. Um, but you know, there's a lot of scope for more complicated usage. You can look at controlling the colour temperature of the lights, um, whether you want it daylight colour or where you want to, whether you want to use a filter and use indoor colour. But that's for more advanced sort of usage. You can plug it into lighting desks. Um, so you could have somebody at a lighting desk controlling multiple lights all rigged into one desk. So although you can just pl put it on the stand, turn it on and use it straight out the box, you can use it in quite advanced ways as well. Um, so it's good because it's a good, strong, reliable light source. You can just dial up the brightness quite easily. There's a little dial on the back of them. I should have brought one in actually. Um, and you can just dial it up and down to suit what the look that you're going for. Um, and as I said, there's various different filters and diffusion, so you can affect the brightness, the harshness, the colour of the, the light that you're using. So if you're going to do something that's maybe, I don't know, like a, a, a serious documentary, you'd want maybe a different sort of lighting setup to something like a, a, a horror film. Um, yeah. So you can do all that, you can change all those settings? Not with, no, there's, gel, there's a pack of gels. I think I've got the gels here. Gels. So that's the one that came with it. And then you've got these filter, it's called a filter kit, gels, um, there's various different terms that you can use, but each one of these, on the front you've got a list of different flavours. You've got Cosmetic Peach, um, Moroccan Frost, uh, <laughs> Pale Blue, Bedford Blue, Medium Amber, Light Red, Sunshine Yellow, Liberty Green, Light Lavender and Bright Pink. And then there's um, colour temperature correction, but that's something that we'll cover in a different workshop. Um, so, what's bad about it? It's big and bulky. Um, it's not that big and bulky. I've seen bigger lighting kits, but the lights fit into there. You can get two lights in there, all the cables in the side, and the stands, you'd have to carry the stands around. They don't fit in the bag. So, if, you don't, if you're happy to use natural light, then you don't need to worry about carrying that. But if you do want to have a reliable light source, you need to take that light kit with you, which can add to the bags and things that you're carrying. Yep. Quick question. As quick. a default, working inside, you might answer this. Sorry, actually. what's that? As a quick de default yeah. setting, just set them up and turn them on. Yeah. And put someone in front of them. Yeah, but it's then you look at your camera and then you look at the exposure and how that handles okay. it. Because if they're completely washed out and too much light, they'll look completely white. There'll be no detail in the face. You'll just see eyes okay. and two holes in the nose and the mouth. And no detail, no shadow, no definition to the, the shape. Okay. So that's where you dial the, the brightness down or yeah. use filters just to soften that and control it a little bit. But it's great. Oh, I've got a, it's, there's a three-point lighting setup, setup in there, which I'm going to quickly... So this is a traditional three-point lighting setup, which I've got in there. Um, so you've got the key light, which is your main light. There's always a source, a key source of light, whether it's daylight, whether it's a light in here. There's always something that's lighting all of us now. So you re recreate that with the key light. That's the primary light source. That's going to cast onto the subject, and then it's going to cast some sort of shadow over this side, so you'll have a fill light, which fills the shadows. It's a little bit um, it's less intense than the, the key light, so it's just adding a little bit of light to add that shape and definition. And then there's a backlight or a kicker, um, which it's easy to forget why you would use that, but it's good because it draws focus. It puts a ring around, a ring of light around the subject, so you'd have the main light, the side light, and then just a small little light at the back, hitting the back of them, it brings out the hairline, and it set, helps define the face, it helps draw focus to the face, but it also helps separate the, the, the subject from the background. So if you've got a busy background, like a load of books or something like that, you could use that, and it sort of just focuses people's attention a little bit. If you watch any interviews or something like that, just look at the lighting, you'll notice one bright side, one slightly less bright side, and then maybe a little bit of a rim, just like a little halo around them, just in the hairline. Um, and that's three-point lighting. Um, it's been used for years. It's come from theatre originally to create depth in theatre, um, but it's used all the time in interviews now. It's a bit of a cliche to use it. Yeah. And to do that, you would use three of those. Three lights. lights. What we one set of quite bright as <coughs> so the key lights, yeah. and then the others. Just well, we down. the LED packs have got two lights in them, and then the chroma key sets. This is how I've achieved it with the kit that we've got. The chroma key sets have got small, tiny little lights, like that, little birdie lights that you can just clip onto something, and that, that, that's what I've been using as a, the backlight. Um, if you haven't got all those, then you can't necessarily do three-point lighting, but then you get a bounce board, you get a big piece of white sheet, and you can bounce light. Um, so there's all little sorts of things like that that you can do, um, but we'll cover the more detailed sort of things like that, tricks and things, in a lighting workshop that we will put together. Um, have I covered that? Yes, I have. 
Um, yeah. You said that's what you know for people to do something interactive. Mm -hmm. But if you were doing objects, would you perhaps set up, you know, a box with the lighting? Or? When you said, what, sorry? No, I'm just. Sorry, sorry. That's no, okay, it's okay. I'm no, curious. I was just thinking if you were perhaps not interviewing the subject or a person, the person yeah. but you were actually filming an object. An object. Um, you could use that, yeah. I mean, it's basically it's to define the item within a space. So you put the key light on, the side light to fill the shadows, and then just that backlight to make it pop out a little bit from the background. Yeah. So it would work on any sort of three dimensional object. Um, it's basically you're moulding the light around the, whatever it is that is the subject. What do you think about having a light directly on the camera? Because we were advised that actually it's it quite depends useful on the situation. If you're just doing something just quick and yeah, easy, yeah. just to have a, a light, an yeah. LED light on the camera, can then mean you're not carrying. Yeah, it exactly. Yeah, it all depends on how many hands you've got to carry the yeah. kit, how many people are there to help you set things up, how much time you've got. If you're filming interviews on the fly, then you're not going to have time to walk around with a lighting kit. You just if like, there's a um, some students who I used to work with would film over at the Arts Centre and they'd film the gigs that were happening there, they'd interview people and they'd just have a light mounted on because it was yeah. dark but they could interview people with that light. So it depends on the situation and what you're filming but yeah that's perfectly, you don't have to use three point lighting, it's just a traditional easy <coughs> way to make things look good. Um, okay, I'm going to quickly move on because I'm aware that time is passing. How long have we got? Not long enough, God. Shall I just ignore the green screen? Uh, oh. Well, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm not even going to get it out of the bag because we haven't actually used it ourselves yet because we've only just recently got the adapter for the camera. Um, but we've got the green screen kit. If any of you don't know what the green screen kit is, it's something that you see every day in science fiction films and weather. Oh, that's the wrong slide. Oh, no. That's the wrong slide. It's not the, C the CC one. Oh, I did it all this morning. <laughs> um, okay, so you see it every day in weather. Um, and basically what the green screen is, it helps you create... Oh, let me just go back one. Um, where did we get to? So basically what it does, it take, you take two images and you're comp composing them together. So you can take a figure that's in a green screen and then you take this image and you're recreating something that isn't actually real. So quick little demonstration, you'd film somebody in front of a green screen. Then you get a background. Then you eliminate the green screen in software, it's called chroma key. Um, it's a tricky piece of um, technology to get your head around, but once you've had a play with it, it's quite easy to just have a look and see what, what you can get. It's, it takes a while to master that. Um, and then you combine the two, and that's what you get. I was at a primary school in South Wales, mm. in Swansea, where the, the young children there were using green screen. Yeah, that's... Uh, but they, unfortunately, when they did the green screen, they forgot that the school uniform was green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can get yeah. gloves, you can get masks, yeah. and so you get people who are walking onto sets and holding things up, dressed in green, so yeah. they don't get filmed. So it's... Well, this it's what, this what you said, primary school, and they were doing um, second of all, basically. Yeah. The fact that it's primary school kids are using it, it shows that it's not that difficult a technique to work with. It's just difficult to master and to make it look good. Um, anyone can stand in front of a piece of green and film themselves and then get rid of the green and put a different background in, but whether that looks believable or good is a different matter. Um, that, that lighting ring that we've just got... Yeah. Um, that, that's the only light you'd use in that setup? That's not a light, it's about, oh. I've not used it, but the screen itself isn't green, it's grey. It's yeah, got yeah. small little micro, micro balls in there, yeah, and yeah. that ring emits a coloured light. Uh, the camera interprets that light bouncing back from the balls as green. as green. So when you look through the viewfinder, oh. it's green, even though it's grey. I've not seen it in action myself, because no, I just haven't had time to prep it. The but idea is because sometimes it's difficult to get a matte yeah. green that's all consistent. Yeah. And somehow using this LED technology is supposed to make it easier to get, uh, to get that match, well, which means you get better. You have to get a nice even green. If, that, if there's any shadows or bumps or anything, then that, when you come to keying it out, that yeah. can cause problems and complications. So, yeah, apparently it's much easier to key out. Anyway, I'm going to have to press on. Um, where did we get to? I'm going to move on from that. <laughs> okay, so just quickly, having talked about lights and green screens and things like that, um, something that I think people should consider as well when they're using the kit is risk um, because the lights get hot, tripods fall over, we're using electrical cables, we're using all sorts of things that could cause um, health and safety nightmares. So it's just worth considering the sort of things that people are taking and just making sure that they're considering those sort of risks. Um, most of them can be solved easily 
just using common sense. So with a trip hazard like the tripods or cables, we've got cables running across and that's been solved by just putting um, tape down or cable straps down. Um, with the tripods, I haven't actually put these on, but um, you get these which are sandbags, you put sand in them and you weigh down your stand so people don't get, knock them over, or if they do bumble into them, then they don't fall over. Um, the burns, the gloves, as I mentioned earlier, so if you're going to be handling a light that's been on for two hours, it's roasting hot, you want to use some gloves, um, or turn it off and wait for it to cool down. Um, and then electrical hazards, just make sure when people um, are using um, extension cables or any sort of cables that's sort of electricity that there's no um, rips in the wire, there's no exposed wire in. And when they use an extension cord, just to pull them fully out so they don't overheat. When you're using the lights, they're drawing a lot of power. If you've got a long extension cable that's coiled up, that will get hotter and hotter and hotter and just melt. Um, so make sure they're fully extended. There's loads of different things that you can look at for risk when you're filming things, but you generally tend to find that the same things crop up over and over again. It's always to do with things falling over, things burning people, um, and electrical hazards. So just to raise a, a point about that. Okay, next I'm going to talk about editing software. So I'm going to talk about Wii Video and Premiere. Um, we do have this GoPro Studio software that I've looked at briefly, but I'm not going to have time to cover that. And there's also Camtasia, which I've not used at all. I don't know whether people use Camtasia. I know Mary does and a few other people. Jeff used to use it. But um, we're going to try and focus on um, Wii Video. Um, so Wii Video is an online editing software. Um, I'll show you the website, actually. Can I do that? No, I won't bother. Um, it's a very simple interface. This is like the, the, the welcome screen. You get not all of these, these are different screenshots. You've got projects, media, and exports. So that's your projects that you're working on, that's the media that you've uploaded, and that's the exports. It's as simple as creating your video. You click that, it will ask you what you want to call the video, it will ask you what footage you want to use. You can upload files directly from your computer, or you can import them from various different cloud sources. So Instagram, Dropbox, Facebook, all those things, anything that's got video media, you can import straight to um, Wii Video and edit it. It's got a really, really, really good, solid support system in that there's videos on pretty much everything that you can do in it, and they're really quite good, clear videos. There's also lots of help articles, so you can click on the, if ever you click on this question mark here, it will pop up this window, and you get all this information. And there's a whole library of videos. Yes? About it. So just to say that, um, the learning portal will be integrating Wii Video into our website. Um, we're going to release that to you, we hope, in October, and that's the plan. Um, and okay. there will be accounts down there. The teaching staff will have accounts through the Catalan Learning Portal, and we'll be able to export up to 50 hours of video a month between sure. us. So we'll have to manage that, and we'll be careful. See how it goes to the cameras. Um, that's all. Thank you. Pardon? Okay. Um, <laughs> So I've just been told I'm running out of time. Um, okay, so the great thing about Wii Video is you've got three different interfaces. Um, so it can be used by people who are confident in the editing and people who have got no editing experience whatsoever. The first one is the beginner mode. Um, it's very simple in that you've got your media. So all your media you've uploaded, any audio, any video, any graphics, that all goes into there. Then you've got your viewer, which is where you can view your media. Um, and here at the bottom is the timeline. Does everyone, is everyone familiar with the timeline and the sequencing? Um, so you literally just drag your audio and video onto the timeline <coughs> and construct it in chunks and then move them around, trim them, edit them and as it plays along the timeline that displays what is actually shown at that point. So at that point I stuck my thumb up. Um, the next one is the intermediate mode. It looks exactly the same apart from the fact that you've got more tracks. So when we were talking about the microphones earlier on and having multiple microphones we could have one audio feed from that, cam that microphone there, another audio feed from that microphone there, and another audio feed maybe there from the camera over there. So you can mix all those three together, get them in sync with each other, and then you can choose which sound source is better at any particular point. Um, you can also have multiple video tracks in, um, in, this, in the intermediate mode. And then, oh, there's also, you can, in the intermediate mode, you can add um, special effects and um, Dissolves. You can do green screen in Wii Video. I've not actually used the, the, the green screen option in it, but it, it is one of the things that they do um, advertise. 
You can do slow motion, fast forward, um, and sped up footage as well. Um, and then finally, you've got the professional, which again, looks very similar. Um, you've got your media, you've got your viewer. It's a timeline that has changed over here. Along the side, you've got these levels, which allow you to control the volume and the intensity of the video. So if you want some video that's overlaid from uh, overlaying another piece of video, you can drop the, um, the opacity of the video so you can see two at the same time or you could use that with graphics, but with the audio, say for example you've created a video and you've got an interview with somebody and you want some music in the background, you can just drop the audio of the music down by sliding that down there, so that's the voice over there, theme music there, just drop that down so it's just in the background, and it allows you to have that sort of control over the timeline and your edit, which isn't possible in the very basic um, beginner mode. We, I was going to do a demo, but we are running out of time, so We'll go through this hopefully with you later on at the end of the day when we've done the little filming projects and we hopefully get onto the computers and do a bit of editing. Um, where am I up to now? Okay. Um, not doing that. Okay, we've, so just quickly go over what's good about it. It's easy to use. Unlimited file storage once we get this whole thing sorted. Um, you can share projects, so you could be working on one project online and then later on in the day you could pick up the same project and carry on working on it, so you can share projects amongst different people. Um, three editing modes, as I've said. Um, most video files you can record on pretty much any camera and it will accept it. Not sure about some of the more obscure phone files, but everything I've tried from all the different cameras that we've got within Kalon works fine. Um, so there's no issues with that. Um, one of the great things is you can edit anywhere. You could go over to the art centre with a laptop and edit. You could go home and sit on your work computer, completely different computer, and edit, which is quite um, flexible. Um, so, so it looks the same on a Mac and a PC, obviously yeah, it does. it's a web it's interface. Web one, yeah. It's yeah. identical. Yeah. Um, it's just the web interface. It looks exactly the same. Um, one of the limits of it, I think, is the way that you can manipulate it on the screen. So you can't change the layout of things, which using Premiere, as I do, I like to be able to do that. Um, there's a smartphone app, so you can download it onto your phone, you can record something on your phone, you can edit it on your phone, and then you can, it, and it's on the cloud. So then when you sit at your computer, that project should be synced there. I tried it the other day, and it didn't work. There was a problem with it. I think it's quite a new feature, the whole um, app thing on the phone, but it is something that they're working towards and developing. And something that's good about Wii Video is that they're constantly pushing things forward. They're, they've changed the interface quite a bit over the last six months to a year or so, so it is constantly being developed. Is, is that up for the smartphone for Android as well as yep. iPhone? Yep. Nice. When so I, you could put it on the tablet as well, mm -hmm. and you'd have a bigger screen to work on. So. When I tried it, Russ, I couldn't get it to, I, could, I was just using it in the beginner mode, and I could do the stuff, but yeah. then it, it just had to stay on the cloud. I couldn't kind of do yeah. it. I couldn't take the video anywhere else apart from just access it yeah. from there. See, I've only the used site, a, so. my own personal um, account and I've not been able to do that, but you were saying a bit this earlier. You need... Because, sorry, you need yeah, yeah, go for it. Because at the moment we haven't integrated it into our summit, so what we've done is uh, we've done a deal with Wii Video, and then you'll have, by, use, by signing up to our website, you'll get access to use the editor, Hello. Wii Video editor within our website, and then you'll be able to export it to... <laughs> Minutes. I've got cameras to go through next. I export it to YouTube quite easily. With a demo account. Yeah, great. Okay, um, I'm going to have to get through this quickly. One problem with it, if you can't get online, if your internet's down, you can't edit. You can't get to your project. So that's one of the big limitations of it. Um, and it's, it's suitable for simple editing. If you've got a little project that you want to edit together, if you want to put text and effects on it, it's just a great little easy to use piece of software that you can use for that. On the other hand, we've then got Premiere Pro, which is what I would use. That's my dog. Um, <laughs> um, and the great thing about Premiere is that although it's got a complex interface, it just is so easy to use. It's very similar in many ways to Wii Video in that you've got your media there, your timeline there, your viewer there, but what you also have is lots of different options, lots of different tools, so you can really manipulate and, 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 and adjust what you need to adjust. Whatever you want to do with editing, you can do with Premiere, which is the, another piece of software we support. Um, if you're familiar with any Adobe software like Photoshop and stuff like that, you might want to try Premiere because a lot of the interfaces between the different Adobe software packages are very similar. They use the same icons, the same tools. I just have some okay. licenses. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, and also there's a great thing in that you're, if you're using other pieces of software like Photoshop, there's this thing called Dynamic Link. So if I had a Photoshop shop file in my timeline, I could right click on it, launch it, it would open in Photoshop and make a change and then close it and then without having to do anything, it would just update. So all the pieces of software with Adobe are interlinked. 
Um, it is quite a, a complex piece of software though. So unless you're confident with editing or Adobe software, I would maybe stick with Wii Video. Um, okay, I'm gonna quickly move on from the summer. You can look at that when we hand out the, um, the, 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 the documents. Can I ask you a really quick question? Yeah. Is there anything that Premiere has that if you wanted to use that feature that we did video doesn't have. So that would be like the, the, the crossover point between, oh, I want to do blah, blah, blah. We video doesn't do it. I have to use Premiere. Is there, is there mm. any, any particular thing that would be like the tipping point between if, if users deciding which to use? I don't know. I mean, what would you suggest? Maybe the chroma key. Or we can do chroma key in Wii Video, yeah. It's, um, I think it's flexibility. It's the ability it's to do fine-tune editing, fine-tune things. So, and a lot of it is speed. Um, shortcuts. I use shortcuts all the time in Premiere. I use the up and down arrows to just nudge along little bits. You can't do that sort of stuff in Wii Video. Yeah, they might do it. They might develop shortcuts, but at the moment they're not there. So if you wanted to get something done very quickly, if you wanted to do a lot of fine detail on that, you would use Premiere. If you wanted to do just a nice simple edit, I think the key thing is a simple edit. Um, you can do some complex things, but it's not the most complex piece of software, um, even in the advanced. Yeah? I guess I would say, like, if you wanted to do things like animated text whizzing around your screen yeah. or something like that, or you wanted to do um, animate how the opacity changed from one shot to another, so you had some... You key frame in it. You can do some of that, but yeah. I think it's a bit more restricted, isn't it? Really complicated. Colour correction, yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's lots of tools within. Because yeah. Adobe covers everything, they, they run After Effects of Soundbooth, so they put all of the bits of technologies that they've developed in sound editing software into Premiere as well, because Premiere is reliant on sound, so you get all sorts of like, nice things like that. Anyway, I'm going to have to press on. So, camera equipment, quickly. Um, so, we've got four cameras the GoPro, um, the Legria, the 700D, which is a stills camera as well as a video camera, and then the JVC, which is a more traditional sort of video camera. Um, if you want to get cameras out, go for it. If not, don't worry. I'm going to be quick. So um, The next two cameras I'll just quickly cover, the GoPro um, and the 700D. great thing about the GoPro is it's small um, and can go pretty much anywhere and records great footage, but it's quite a complicated camera to use. Um, the interface in this is awful. You try and navigate around the menu, it's like dealing with an old Casio watch. It's terrible. Um, so if you are going to use the GoPro, if anyone is going to use the GoPro, download the app for your phone. You can control it remotely from your phone, from a tablet. Um, there is a remote with it, but the great thing about the app is that it gives you a view of what the camera is seeing. So there's no viewfinder on the GoPro, so you can't see what it's pointing at unless you're using the app. Um, Small, discreet, it's got brilliant picture quality, so a really wide angle lens, um, so it's got a nice fisheye look, which you can correct in post-production. Um, it's great in low light, you can mount it on anything, you can mount it on a car, you can mount it on your chest, you can mount it on your dog, you can mount it on uh, your, anything. There's loads of different attachments that you can buy from the GoPro site. It's waterproof when it's in this packaging, so, you can, so it's in, got to be in this housing, um, but you can put it underwater and it's just, it's just a great, versatile little camera that you can pretty much take anywhere and strap to anything. Um, you can't really control the picture that well. Um, it's got a terrible user interface, as I said. Audio is not great on it. If you're, going to if you're going to record something with this and you want good audio as well, that's when you'd start thinking about using a zoom and having a microphone and then syncing the two together. Um, there's no display. You can't see what you're recording. Um, and again, that's when you'd use the, 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 the app for the smartphone. And you'd use it for filming unusual different perspectives, things that you don't really... Everyone knows what footage looks like when you stand and point a camera at it. <coughs> Whereas if you get a camera and you start putting it on the floor or mounting it up high, you start to get different unusual perspectives which can make things look a little bit more interesting and maybe make it a bit more dynamic, your, your film. Um, sports, action videos and time-lapse, it's great for time-lapse. Just a, one yep. quick question about that with time lapse. Yep. What about the battery in it? Does it? Well, yeah. it's limited. I'm not sure what the actual limitation of it is. What I did though, because I did a time lapse overnight of yeah. the sun. I wanted to get the sun rising yeah. at five in the morning, but I wasn't going to come into work at five in the morning. So I left it recording at night. Yeah. I took it out of the casing. Yeah. There's a USB socket, and I got a little. Yeah, you know, like you can get battery packs to recharge your phone. Have yeah. you seen those? Like they're big battery packs. I got one of those and plugged it in. Or you could plug it into the mains and re just have it running off the mains. It'd be difficult if you're outside, obviously. Yeah, but if you got... wanted to use it in a time lapse in a place where there was water. Oh, right. Well, 
It's underwater, time lapse underwater. No, in, in an aquarium, so well, you couldn't have it plugged into the main. But you could get a little battery pack, which I've got one, my own personal one, that cost me 40 pounds and it lasts for days and I can charge my phone four or five times off it. I just plugged it into that and it ran for, for well, through the night. Okay, great. So, and that's constant usage as well. It's not like charging for a little bit and then turning off, it's constantly drawing power. So anyway, um, 600D, no, 700D. It's primarily a stills camera. I'll bring it over here so I don't have to keep walking over. Of all the cameras, it's probably the best pitch quality, um, for video, that is. Um, but it's primarily a, 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 a stills camera, but it does excellent, excellent video footage. As I've said with all the kit, it's easy to use at the box. You turn it on, you can put it into record mode, press record in auto mode, and it will give you great results. You won't have any control over the picture, exposure, or quality, but it will record, it will pick up something, it will do a good job, and the footage will look fantastic. Um, but but as with the most of the kit that we've got, it's got a lot of expanded use. You can use it much more detailed if you want to, if you want to get more technical with it. Um, it's a good option to take this if you don't want to take a big camera like the JVC. It's a small, tidy little package. Without that on and with that close, it's just a small, standard little camera. The video quality is brilliant. Um, you can control your exposure if you put it into manual very effectively. All the controls are as you would expect on a DSLR, just to hand. That's the problem with the smaller cameras, the controls, are to, to, the controls are in the screen, they're difficult to, to change things quickly, whereas with this you just dial it up and down. Um, you can change the lens, that's one of the key things about the DSLR, you can change the lens, so you can get much more creative with the picture look, the picture style. So if you want a nice wide angle lens, if you want a nice telephoto lens, you've got the option to mix that up and still get the fantastic um, quality footage. You can use the wide angle lens on the, the GoPro, but it's, it's a GoPro and it's limited, you can't change the footage, the, you can't expose the footage manually. Um, so it's good, flexible, nice, creative little camera. Um, it's also got a touch screen, so if I had this focused on somebody up front, I would just touch them and it would focus on them. If I touched in the background, it would focus on the background, so you don't have to actually use the focus wheel. I mean, you probably should to get precise um, focus, but you don't have to. Um, Right, what's good about it? What's, oh, we can only record for 30 minutes at a time. After 30 minutes, it will stop, and that's because it's not a video camera. It, it, it's just limited. They, they put limitations on these cameras so that they have to finish after 30 minutes. You can start another clip, but if you're recording an interview with this, don't let it run over 30 minutes, because it will just stop. Um, the mic is, there's a built-in mic, which is awful, but all the kits should have this Rode microphone with them. You can use that, which gives you a good sound, but you can also use a, a, a zoom to record a secondary sound source, so you can mix the two. But this does give you great quality sound as well. Um, not as good as a zoom, though. Um, where am I up to, where am I up to? Oh, the other thing, one of the key things about this is, it's designed as a still camera. A video camera sits on your shoulder, you can walk around with it, it's got a certain weight to it, it's got a certain shape to it. You can walk around with it quite sta and have it quite stable, whereas with a DSLR, they're smaller, the body, the ergonomics of it are much more different. So that can be quite tricky to film with if you're not using a tripod or some sort of a, a shoulder rig, um, which is why you see people with those big shoulders. And it's all to do with the ergonomics of it. Um, what else? Um, I'm going to move on. So it's good really for creative filming. If you're going to make something that you want to be a bit more creative in the style, um, when the pitch quality is really important because it does give you fantastic pitch quality. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a great camera that you can use for Anything? Leg rear? Oh, I didn't put, that's the old one. Um, so the leg rear is the camera that we think will probably get the most use, which is why we did the video first. Um, it's just very small, very easy to use. Um, <coughs> it's self-contained, it's got a built-in stand, it's got a built-in microphone, it's got a flexible built-in viewfinder. Um, it's got various different special recording modes, so you can do interval record, you can do slow motion. Um, it's got different angles, you can either have a wide angle shot with, of the footage or you can zoom it in. Uh, I'll turn mine now as well. <laughs> the bad is that you can't necessarily control the image quality, uh, the image exposure. You can adjust it slightly, but you haven't really got a lot of control. Um, and the microphone inside is not necessarily the best microphone ever. Um, so if audio is important and you're using this, use the Zoom. Um, it's good for quick, simple little videos, you just pick it up, go record. Um, blogs, web videos, things like that. Um, 
and for filming large spaces, because it's got a nice, really wide angle lens, if you want to show a big scene of a room or a space, you can just stand and point that and it gets all the information. So it can pick up this room quite easily. Whereas if you used a different camera with a different lens, it would only pick up a narrow field. So it's useful for that. Um, okay, I'm going to go over the basic anatomy of it because we are going to be using these cameras later on. So on the... No time. Okay, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. I'll turn it off. Okay, next we're going to go over the JVC. Am I over yet? How far over? What time is it? Eight minutes over. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for cutting your short. Um, JVC, it looks intimidating. It's a big camera, but it's a great camera and it's not that difficult to use if you just leave it in auto. Um, like with most cameras, if you want to develop the, if you want to move into the manual settings, you can, but it becomes much more complex. Um, and the great thing about it is it's a traditional camera. You know where things are. You take it off, you hold it. It feels right. It feels good. You use it with two hands. You've got the zoom on the top, you've got your microphone, you've got your lens, you've got your viewfinder. It's what you expect from a video camera. Um, okay, so despite it looking complicated, it is easy to use. Just leave it in auto if you're not comfortable. Um, but the, 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 the manual mode does allow for a lot of flexibility. Whatever you want to do with the camera, this camera can do it. It's got complete manual controls. Um, it's got professional sound input, so XLR, which is the standard professional sound um, connection. It's got a built-in unit that you can plug those into, so you can plug in multiple mics. As I've already said, we've got two mics going into that camera, which gives us options when it comes to recording. So if sound is key for your recording, for your project, then you should go with this camera or something that is using one of the other cameras with um, the zoom. Um, you can monitor your levels as well, so you can plug in headphones and you can listen to the quality of the sound that you've got. You can adjust the quality of the sound, you can dial it up, dial it down, and that's all on the side here. So this is your audio interface. You can control the volume on those two levels there for each microphone. Um, this is a camera that you can, this is the only camera you can use with our green screen kit. If you're using the, um, the Chroma Key kit, the lens adapter is designed for this camera. So if you're going to do a green screen, you will be using this this kit. Um, and as I said earlier on, it's designed to shoot video. It is just a video camera. It's not a stills camera pretending to be a video, be a video camera. It's not a little, one of these little smaller, more like toy-like cameras. It is a prosumer camera that would be used to do professional shoots. Um, bad things about it, it's large. It can be intimidating to use. There's a lot of buttons and that can get quite complex. There's tons on the side. There's tons on the back, and if you go into the menu, the menu sometimes it intimidates me. Um, it's not, it's, it's a, it can be a complicated camera. Um, the pitch quality is okay. It's not the, as good as the JVC, I mean, sorry, the, um, the Canon cameras. And another limitation is that it's only got the one fixed lens. You can't change lenses, which is one of the benefits to using the, the DSLR. But it is a solid camera that can be used in most situations, so it is one that I would recommend personally. Um, especially if you want to get good quality sound. So it, it's good for anything, but mainly like things like documentaries or interviews, things like that, where you want the pitch to look good and the sound to look good. Um, when you're taking this kit out, you do need to consider what other little bits and bobs you might take with it. Um, so you'd want to think about things like the tripod. You should always have a tripod with you just in case. Um, it's nothing worse than handheld shaky shots. Um, with this kit, you can, you do actually get a microphone with the kit that's plugged directly into the camera, but you can also take that out quite easily, take that off and put either the directional mic in or the lapel mic, which we're using now, um, or a variety of different mics. So you've got that option. Um, or you can just take this whole unit off. I might as well do it. And use, there's two little microphones there. So if you want it to be, that's quite a small little unit then. Um, it takes a lot of the bulk down, so it's quite flexible in that way. Um, but if you're going to take any of the audio kit with you, take the XLR, maybe the boom pole, always take headphones so you can monitor your sound. So this isn't just, you wouldn't, when you take this, you wouldn't necessarily just take the camera. You take loads of different peripheries that would help make it a little bit more easy to use and to help you get a better recording. Um, there's a, in this presentation, which we're going to give out, there's a bit of a comparison 
Um, I'm not going to go through that now, but greens are like plus points, reds are negatives, and yellow is kind of like in between, it's like there. So if you look, the JVC gets all the greens. So. <laughs> um, so and here's a quick summary of the cameras. So Legri is ideal for video blogs. Um, GoPro is ideal for action shooting, get it in the unusual places. JVC is good for documentary filming because of the audio mainly. Um, and the 700D, the Canon camera, the DSLR, is good for more creative um, filming because of the stuff that you can do. You can change the lenses and this, that, and the other. Um, underneath, I've put additional kit that you might want to take with it. With the 700D, you might want to take the zoom um, recorder. In any situation where you want to get good sound and you've got one of the lesser cameras, give somebody a zoom with microphones, with headphones, so that at least they can get their picture, quality, their picture through the camera that they're taking, not this one. Um, but their audio, you don't want to get the audio from those cameras if you can avoid it. Um, or if in, audio is important, use the zoom or use this. Um, 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 how are we? Well, you're way over now. Oh no, I'm finishing now. I've got like two slides left. Um, okay, a few quick tips for the cameras. Don't force anything. If something's not going on this, turn it on and off, it can be quite difficult. You have to press a button in and twist it. If you don't press a button in, you'll break it. So don't force anything. If it's not going with any of the kit, don't force anything. Um, avoid getting them in extreme temperatures. Don't leave them in windows and things like that. Direct sunlight. Don't get the kit wet. You would be amazed how many people think that cameras are waterproof. They're not, unless they're in the case like the GoPro. Um, Does that apply to just slight rain drizzle? I wouldn't do it. I mean, it, I've got my phone wet, I've got things wet, but it's not going to, if anything gets into some of the elements, then it could cause all sorts of problems. So it's best not to. You can get rain covers for cameras. So if you are, do find yourself in a situation where you have to film outdoors and the weather's bad, an umbrella. Pardon? Yeah. Well, <laughs> an umbrella. Take an umbrella. Um, um, what else? What else? Oh, lens cap. Always put the lens cap on, especially with this camera. It's quite easy to forget that there's a lens cap because it's built in. You slot it on and you can put it in the bag open and all sorts of dust and things, I don't know what, it could ruin the, the lens. Other thing as well is make sure you close SD card flaps as well. Make sure you close them so dust doesn't get in. I think I've put that. Um, clean your lenses as well. Try not to touch them. Um, close SD card flaps. Make sure you charge the batteries. And the most important tip, don't forget to press record. Um, I think I'm pretty much done. So I think I've kind of had to skip over a lot. <laughs> there will be a follow-up workshop um, on all the different, as different aspects that we've covered. Sorry if it's been a lot of information to take in. And sorry if it's been a little bit techy and saying things that people might not get. Um, it's part of my job to answer questions and to support people. So. If you're ever working with a piece of kit that you're not sure, just call up and I'll do my best to help you over the phone or just support in any way that I can. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. You. Are there any questions? That's a no? Yeah. <laughs> you can ask questions tomorrow. <laughs>